I'm a reader in marketing at the University of Westminster. In today's presentation, I want to introduce one of the projects that I'm currently working on. It's a comparative study on the consumption behavior of the UK's and Taiwan's cultural quarter visitors. This project is funded by UK's British Academy and Taiwan's Ministry of Science and Technology. Uh, this is uh, Sheffield's Cultural Industries Quarter. Uh, this building in particular uh, used to be the National Center for Popular Music, but it's currently a student union uh, for Sheffield Hallam University. During this presentation and throughout this project, I hope I'll be able to inter introduce more cultural quarters and more significant buildings uh, to you. In this presentation, I, uh, I have four uh, topics. Uh, first of all, I want to give you an overview of our projects. And second, I want to introduce uh, the definition of cultural goods uh, development and cultural quarters. And third, I want to give you an idea of what we are doing uh, by introducing our research uh, purpose, research questions, research objectives, and research timeline. Finally, I want to give you an idea of what kind of outputs that we expect to produce by the end of this project. As I said earlier, this project was funded by UK's British Academy and Taiwan's Ministry of Science and Technology. It's called the International Partnership and Mobility Scheme. I mean, it is a one-year scheme, but it can be a multi-scheme if you choose to uh, to apply uh, for multi-years. It is a good, excellent scheme if you're working with scholars from around the world and or if your topic is of international importance. Uh, I'm uh, Norman. Uh, I'm a reader in marketing at the University of Westminster. In the center, it's our collaborator from Taiwan. He's uh, Professor Hong Guangpeng. Uh, he currently is a professor of management and head of department uh, f at Mingchuan University. And Dr. Annie is uh, Dr. Chen is from Sheffield Helen University. She is currently a reader uh, in marketing and tourism management. Uh, we have worked together before and it's a privilege to have them on uh, this research project uh, with me. So what is a cultural group? What is cultural group good? Well, cultural goods includes a lot of things. It could be music, it could be TV program, it could be advertising, and so on and so forth. And cultural goods it has, it's, it, have become a very important part of our society and our economy. Developed economy, economies such as the US, the UK, uh, Germany, France, Italy, um, have exported a lot of our cultural goods uh, to the world. And cultural industry, in many ways, I mean, is heavily influenced uh, by the UK. Uh, in 1997, which is quite an important year, uh, when Tony Blair and the Labour Party uh, get into power, they established the Department for Culture, uh, Sport, Media and Sports. Uh, this gives a boost to uh, UK's cultural industry development. I mean, of course, I mean, there are uh, debates uh, regarding the benefits and shortcomings of this department, but it is probably uh, a topic for another day. One of the particular industries, the cultural industry that we are looking for, or we're trying to research on, is, the, is related to cultural quarters. Why is it important? Well, because cultural quarter has the ability to regenerate a city or regenerate area. Uh, it can foster cultural diversity and creativity. It is good for the economy, and it can become a very popular tourism destination, as I'll show you uh, in the near future. So how can we define cultural qu uh, quarter? Well, according to scholars, um, cultural quarters are defined as a distinctive and uh, specifically limited area that, that contains a large number of cultural activities and facilities uh, when compared to other areas. Our research is a comparative research. Uh, we want to compare uh, UK's cultural quarters with Taiwan's cultural quarters. Uh, some of the cultural quarters that we want to include in our study includes Manchester's Northern Quarters, uh, Sheffield's Cultural Industries Quarter, and Birmingham's Julie Quarter. I mean, all three <coughs> um, uh, cultural quarters I mentioned, they're in the Midlands, South Yorkshire area, or, or Greater Manchester area. Um, one of the reasons that we focus on these three cultural quarters is uh, that these three areas um, used to be a bit run down, but through government intervention, through locals, community support, uh, they have turned themselves around and become very popular, very prosperous, uh, prosperous uh, area. 
Uh, in Taiwan, I mean, we want to experience some of the emerging economies in the Asia Pacific area, such as uh, South Korea, Taiwan, and China, have been trying to develop their culture industry uh, by considering UK's uh, model and considering UK's experience. Uh, for example, this uh, is Songshan Cultural and Creative Park in Taipei, Taiwan. It used to be an old tobacco factory, uh, a bit run down, but through government support, uh, local communities help, and uh, business support, it had turned itself around. It can become very popular, a very hip uh, place for young people to hang out, for young artists uh, and artists in general uh, to exhibit their work. So one of the questions that we want to ask is that, well, what makes some of the cultural quarters uh, successful, attractive, while some um, did not achieve the desired effect? And also we want to ask, well, uh, by copying UK or established econ economies models and method, is it really the only way to, to develop cultural industries? If not, what other potential uh, methods can be considered by uh, Asia Pacific's uh, policymakers? Realize, I mean, it is a fascinating topic, but probably a bit too big for us to handle. And after discussion, we decided to focus on visitors. And this is what we came up with. Uh, the research purpose is to understand how different or similar are Taiwanese cultural quarter visitors when compared to British visitors. Uh, the reason why that we focus on visitors is because, well, uh, we are trained as a marketer and we have a lot of interest in cultural industries or cultural destinations. And perhaps most importantly that I mean, we all like to travel. So we decide, well, why not study something that we enjoy uh, enjoy as, as, as individual? So how do national culture influence visitors uh, in terms of loyalty, in terms of recommendation behavior? Uh, at the moment, we are thinking about using Hofstede's national culture as the basis for our research, but uh, more research and more literature review uh, is still required. The second objective is perhaps the most important objective for this current research is that is the question of how do cultural quotas cultural value uh, influence visitors' loyalty, and perhaps the deeper question is that what is your cultural value, and how how can we measure it? Can we come up with a more unified or uniform method to measure cultural value? Or is this something that is case by case? Third, we want to know more about the influence of personal value. Uh, at the moment, we are considering Shua's personal value and how it influences uh, their behavior and loyalty toward cultural quarters. Um, however, as I said, probably more literature review will be required before we make uh, our final decision. And the last objective is that we do want to have implication uh, that recommendation that we can make to policymakers, uh, to cultural entrepreneurs, and to creative workers. We just don't we don't want our research to be uh, just limited to journal articles or textbooks or. Uh, that kind of publications. We want to have some impact uh, on, real, on, on the practice. So our plan of actions. At the moment, we are in the very early stage of stage one. We're just getting started. Uh, we want to know more about culture quotas from the books, but we also want to do some in-depth in interviews uh, with visitors as well as with uh, members from local communities. Uh, basically, we want to know more uh, before we had and then uh, we start to think about uh, surveys and so on. In stage two, it's probably we're going to spend some time to analyze the qualitative data we gathered uh, during this couple of the next couple of months. And th toward the end of second stage or stage two, uh, we want to start to di distribute surveys and then to collect a visitors' uh, experience uh, to collect. Uh, data from visitors. And stage three is probably going to, we're going to spend most of our time trying to analyze data and then try to write our reports and then try to reach out to look uh, policymakers or uh, uh, practitioners to see whether they will be interested uh, to listen to what we have found. Uh, as for publications, I mean, we are academic, we are research. Yes, we want to have impact, but we also want to have some academic outputs, for example, journal articles, 
uh, conference paper. And also very importantly, we want to use this opportunity to train our uh, research students, whether it's postgraduate research students or PhD research students. We want to have several sessions to inform them of, of what we do and then hopefully to include them uh, in our projects. And then we want to conduct several uh, research seminars in the UK as well as in Taiwan to exchange views and to exchange ideas with uh, leading scholars. And hopefully we want to have some uh, other outlet, for example, uh, these video logs. Uh, we're still thinking about what other outlets can be used, but um, hopefully we will be able to come up with some ideas as we go along. Uh, we would like to thank you for listening, and we hope that we will see you uh, very soon. And hopefully we will have some news regarding our projects to bring to you. Thank you very much, and goodbye.